It's another busy morning for Sydney controllers. It's approaching 11am on Friday the 17th of March and controllers busily arrange departures and arrivals. Unbeknownst to them, the day is about to take an unexpected turn. Rex 768 is descending on a short hop from Albury, located on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. About eight nautical miles from the airfield, Sydney Approach receives a disturbing report from the pilots. Hello, the uh, prop has just uh, fallen off the aircraft and uh, step up for the instructions. Back 768, Sydney uh, uh, Trip Control had acknowledged. Are you uh, happy to maintain 8,000 or uh, you want further descent? Further descent, thanks, Rex 768. Rex 768, descend now to 6,000. Descend now to 6,000, Rex 768. Rex 768, plan to give you vectors now to the left for left circuit downwind, and I'll advise your runway. Rex 768. Rex 768, turn left heading of 010. Left 010, Rex 768. News of the incident unfolding overhead is passed to tower controllers, who immediately halt all departing traffic. Cancel the lineup. Cancel the lineup. Hold position. Hold position. Corner 429. Corner 429. I just had an emergency declared overhead, so I'll just keep you on the ground until that's sorted out. Corner 429. Okay, rest of the eight. If you could just give us um, some details uh, again, so we can get those down and we can uh, pass up to onwards to the tower and services. And uh, 768, yes, uh, we've just had uncommanded engine operations and then our propeller has uh, just sheared off. We've lost the propeller. We've got uh, normal controls, still able to fly. Would uh, require one six right and uh, emerge services on the ground, thanks. We should be able to conduct a uh, caution landing fine. Rex 768, okay, that's uh, all understood. Uh, you can expect one six right for landing. Uh, there'll be further descent very shortly. I'll just hand you over in, uh, in one minute to uh, director. Rex 768. To the north, a Cathay Pacific 777 descends after a nine-hour long-haul flight from Hong Kong. The flight crew queries approach control over which ILS approach they're likely to be assigned for runway 16 right. One six right. Uh, can we expect our left Yankee or a Zulu for the approach? Cathay one zero one. Cathay one zero one. We've got an aircraft with an emergency. There will be some delaying action before I can get to the one, runway one six right. And uh, maintain one zero thousand. I'll give you the uh, uh, vector shortly for the delaying action. Roger. Uh, we maintain one zero thousand. Can we slow down? Cathay one zero one. Cathay one zero one. Uh, a firm. You can reduce speed to minimum climb speed. Cathay one zero one. Uh, Sydney approach, Q-Link 472 Delta, I present 9 of thousand information in here. Q-Link 472 Delta, Sydney approach, good day to you, descend to uh, 6,000 feet, runway 16 uh, right, expect pilot approach. Descend to 6,000 feet, runway 16 right, Q-Link 472 Delta. Q-Link 472 Delta, stop your descent altitude to 7,000. Stop descent at 7,000, Q-Link 472 Delta. 7,000. Maintain 10,000, Cafe 101. So the ones that are one, there probably has to be a runway inspection after this aircraft lands. It's a turboprop that lost in a uh, propeller approaching Sydney. So he's still on downwards at the moment trying to sort things out. But um, leaning your runway, they'll probably need a runway inspection. OK, copy. Cafe, one zero one. Just for five zero eight, reduce minimum clean speed and two pan traffic ahead. You may possibly be repositioned for one six left. OK, uh, minimum speed and copy seven just up five zero. And so is there any special uh, instructions for vacating or just vacate as normal? No, just a normal vacating point. Copy. Heading 472 Delta. Uh, possible reposition for runway 162, emergency traffic ahead. Confirm for Keeling 472 Delta. Keeling 472 Delta, are you happy? One way, runway 16 uh, left? Uh, negative, Keeling 472 Delta, we need um, yeah, 16 right. 
After the damaged aircraft lands, ground services must inspect the runway to ensure it's safe for other aircraft to use. Car 3 and Company at uh, Bravo 1 and to runway 1 to France.
Sender 4, thank you, and uh, contact uh, ground 121.7. Thank you very much. City Tower, Kilo 472 Delta. Kilo 472 Delta, Sydney Tower, and uh, copied the medical on board. Kilo 472 Delta, thanks. Kilo 472 Delta, the threshold wind 180 degrees at 23 knots, runway 16 left, clear to land. Runway 16 left, clear to land, Kilo 472 Delta. Right, clear to land, Cafe 101. Cafe 101, we're very sure, and our car is at 800 feet. Cafe 101, thank you. During their preliminary investigation, ATSB investigators interviewed the flight and cabin crew. The first officer, sitting closest to the propeller, reported that he saw the prop separate and travel upwards and away from the aircraft. Once the plane was safely on the ground, the ATSB quickly set to work calculating the trajectory and likely position of the propeller based on information from the aircraft's flight data recorder. Just in there, that's it, mate. You got, got it, it. Yep. Yep. go in there, go in on that. Okay, you got it. You're recording, mate? Uh, be... Yeah, we are recording. Several days later, on March the 21st, the missing prop was spotted by a New South Wales police helicopter in Georges River National Park, less than 10 nautical miles from the airfield. The airline grounded five more Saab 340s in order to secure propeller gearboxes and shafts of the same production series for detailed examination. A similar incident occurred in 1991, when a Comair Saab 340 suffered a propeller detachment near Buffalo, New York. The crew landed safely, and the NTSB concluded in their final report that the shaft failed due to fatigue. Metallurgical examination found a slag inclusion just below the fracture surface. This defect occurred during the melting of the original ingot. The ATSB published its preliminary report in mid-April. Initial examinations of the propeller shaft revealed cracking that appeared to run between the main shaft and the flange region. The crack was found to be a fatigue fracture that had initiated within the propeller mounting flange and then transitioned into the shaft section. This is the first known critical failure of this type, initiating within the propeller hub flange of a GE Aviation CT79B engine. The investigation into the separation of the Rex propeller continues. <laughs>